Today we're going to paint another flower in my Nostalgic Flowers series. I'm going to play with masking a little. For that, I'm using masking tape. I used one inch wide so I wouldn't have to repeat as often and go over these thick areas. I've already cut it out with an X-Acto knife and I just left two little petals here to show you how to do it. Now I have to go over that spot twice usually where there's a double tape. And when you go around the corner, you kind of have to turn your paper, unless you're better at steering than I am. And now we get to take the tape off now. I go gently. And if you've never done this before, I would recommend trying it on a scrap piece of paper and make sure you're not cutting so deep that you're ruining your paper. It is easier to not cut deep than I expected the very first time I did it. We're gonna start with a blue sky and I'm using manganese for that. And I'm using a Princeton Neptune number no. six, which is a huge brush for this small of a painting, but it's okay. And I'm just gonna, I uh, might add some other blue at the top. Let's make it very vibrant. That's enough of that color though. And as I go down, I rinse my brush, dry it a bit on the sponge, and let the paint fade as it goes down. And if you want, you can do some clouds. I do them with a the tissue. You wanna do them sort of quickly and you don't want the perfectly round spots. Clouds just don't usually do that. Now this cloud is closing in, this, and I don't want that sharp of an edge, so I'm gonna go back. Now I want to put some of the stems and stuff in the background before the paper dries. This has dried a bit more than I wanted because I want some of these background flowers to spread out quite a lot and be blurred like they really are far away. So I'm just going to go back over this a bit. So often in nature, daisies are found in the middle of grasses. I don't know where you live, but here in the northwest, there's lots of wild daisies. So I'm just putting grasses and we'll put more grasses in the foreground when we get to that part. At the bottom, I'm gonna, I want it to be greener. I don't really want sky all the way down there. So I want it to end up a lot of green. So while it's wet, I'm gonna fill in more. Now the stems on these flowers I want them to not be too defined either because I'm going to fuzz those flowers up. So I'm going to put them in now. But I want to bring the grasses and stems into the foreground. And I think I should make this a little bit golder like that is. So I'm just going back in and putting some on. And I'm just going to put them as I see them in the painting. I don't have them drawn, but you can draw them if you find that preferable. I want it to be mostly green under the flower so that it defines the petals.
same with these. They're going to seed like this. They shouldn't be quite so bright. Now I'm going to put a little bit of bleed proof white on my palette and you need a completely clean brush for that. Clean water is good and just put a little bit on your palette. This is Dr. Martin, PH Martin's bleed proof white and it works like watercolor except that it's not transparent and it makes it, makes it easy to correct things and you can mix it with other colors or you can paint over it. So see how that will dry a little bit lighter than it is. It's bringing some of these to the foreground. And I can mix some more color with them if I want some darker green ones. And the tops of these Probably be nice to have some, a little bit of white on them. Now we get to take the tape off. You can see the drawing is still there. Taking the tape off is the fun part. It does tend to come off in the strips that you put it on. One advantage of doing your background first is that you can see what it actually looks like because often when you're painting light colors, especially white, it looks, everything that you put onto the petal looks way too dark. So I have two colors mixed here. One's a little bit purpler and one's a little bit bluer. And I want to minimalize the paint. So I could have watered that down even more, so I'm getting my brush rinsed and just putting some wet along there. And then there's this bigger streak that goes up this one. And it goes all the way up there. Drying off my brush, spreading that out a little bit. And I'm about to do what I normally do and start over at a side petal here. This one's a bit purpler and it's a bit darker. Drying off my brush moving the paint across. To make a softer look. And then I'll get that little part down there later. This petal is brighter, except for over in this corner. And it also has a little detail line that's pretty strong right there. And then at, at the bottom it's darker because it's curving. Let's get that darker part in there. Dry my brush. Soften that edge. I'm going to bring these closer so I see where I'm working. I'm just going to soften that edge with a dry brush. I don't want to move too much color around. And then behind it, this petal will be a little bit darker. I continually am dipping my paintbrush and drying it off.
I'm even watering down a patch of the blue. Especially these top petals, they would be reflecting some blue. Still need some gray, but my brush I'm going to soften those edges get a little bit of gray in there So with these flowers, I have a, just put a little bit of shading on and I'm just fuzzing them up. I might even add a little tiny bit of blue around them so that they, they look more like they're further away. Now we'll get that big yellow center in and then we'll do some tweaking. One of the things that I always do is I always tweak every painting. After it's all finished, I go back in and I look at it and decide what else it needs. Now that flower has a lot of detail and I'm not gonna put it all in. It, I don't think it's necessary for the well-being of the painting. I want some idea of texture, but it doesn't have to be a ton. some of my brown that I had mixed from the grasses. I'm putting it in while it's wet, it's spreading out. I need something definitely darker. This kind of defines the spaces between the petals and the bottom of the, uh, whatever this thing is, the center, my mind's blanking. All you flower people will know. And gonna put a few more of those dots and smear them a little bit more just to make this whole part darker so that it looks more 3D. 
Now I'm going to use some of that bleed proof white I got out a minute ago and just do a couple things like this petal curves and I've kind of lost the curve on it. This petal, I think that it needs a little bit more glow. Some of these lines just got rough. And so I just want to smooth off the edges of these petals. Now, ideally, you'd never use bleed proof white. But because it has this charm when there's uh, not something added. But um, one thing that you have to consider is that the paper is not as white as that flower in the photo. And it was printed on white paper. The paper that we use to paint on is usually not totally white. Let's take the tape off and see what we have. I see right away I've taken the tape off made me notice that I, I do need some more darks in between these different petals. And down here. So I'm getting my brown out some more. I don't want to lose the smoothness of that petal. And there we have a daisy that brings me lots of memories. If you like this video, please hit the like. All of the supplies that I used in this are available in the descriptions. I still need to do a little bit of darkening in between in some of these different areas. Some of the behind petals so that the front pops out. and it becomes more 3D looking. So I'm quickly going to go back and do that. I think I'm about ready to call it done though. I believe this daisy is finished. I always look at them in my windowsill for a few days or at least hours and usually I find little things that I tweak. Hope you have a great time painting this daisy and other flowers that bring memories for you. Happy painting.